Alrighty, topic two. Kind of funny. So, kind of funny prom is coming up uh, on June 30th, and I'll be going to that. And I've been lucky enough to go to their past live events. Kind of funny live two, kind of funny live three. So, I wanted to talk about my experience with two and three a little bit first, and then topic three would be prom and what I'm excited about and things like that. I think there'll be two different topics. Maybe it'll merge into one. I don't know. Future Brett will worry about that when he's editing this out. Um, but, yeah, I was, uh, like I said, I was very fortunate enough to go to Kind of Funny Life 2 and Kind of Funny Life 3. And they were a lot of fun. And not that it was unexpected, but, like, Kind of Funny Life 2 has a much different story for myself than Kind of Funny Life 3 in a way. Kind of Funny Life 2, I was living out in California, and I, you know, watched Kind of Funny Life 1, and I was like, yeah, I want to go to that. It's a live event, do the podcast live, you know, other little silly shenanigans and stuff like that, and it's a cool live show where you can see these guys that I've been watching on YouTube for almost a year and a half at that point or something like that, um, and just kind of, you know, join in on the fun. Um, kind of Funny Life 1, small event you know, very uh, ground level type stuff, which makes sense. It was their first one. And then this one, they kind of went all out. Um, they had, you know, some help from Rooster Teeth and whatnot, and they were kind of expanding to see what they were and stuff like that. So I lived in California. I didn't know anybody in California besides three people, my roommate, and then two high school friends who also moved out at the same time, and they were in L.A., so they're a little ways from where I was living. But um, So I decided to go on this trip all by myself, solo, drive eight hours up to SF, up to San Francisco, and just, you know, have faith in myself to go hang out and try and be social and have a good time there. And um, it was a lot of fun. I wasn't like the best communicator as i am now um but like it was a lot of fun i met a lot of cool people and it was a it was a good experience um once again i'm gonna kind of be looking this way i'm bringing up photos for myself just to kind of know where to take this um but yeah flying solo was interesting uh the drive up wasn't too bad pretty much a straight shot uh, SF itself driving in, man, fucking steep as hell. That was scary. Um, saw an accident happen right in front of me with a motorcycle, so I was like, ah. But um, that initial <laughs> meet and greet, uh, lady, I'll show him post show. Um, the initial meet and greet, um, obviously flying so I didn't meet anybody right away. I was walking around where we're supposed to be. And there's nobody. It's just this big park where you can see the Golden Gate Bridge and stuff like that. And I decided, all right, I'll sit down on a beach, or sit on a beach, sit on a bench. And I, you know, tweet at one of the community people who was in charge, and I was like, hey, just checking where you guys are at. And they were on their way from the, uh, what's the prison there? Um, crap. I'm like, Alamo is in my head, but it's not the Alamo. It's the you know, the one that they broke out of and whatever. But anyway, they went on a tour there. I didn't obviously make the tour, so they were Alcatraz. Thank you very much. They were on their way to from there to there. So I was like, all right, cool, I can hang out. Um, so I sat on a bench, obviously donning a kind of funny shirt because I'm like, oh, it's kind of funny's event. I'll wear kind of funny shirts all week. Nobody will do that. <laughs> no, just to kind of, you know, make it easy and accessible. And I meant really... Um, I was sitting on the bench and some people walked by and they're like, hey, kind of funny guy, you know, what's up? And that's when I met Patrick and Drew and they were really cool and I hung out with them most of the week, but they were more funhouse. Well, one of them was more of a funhouse fan. The other one was kind of funny fan, um, but they welcomed me right in. And like, like I said, I wasn't the most social of guy, but like they were really kind and you know, we hung out throughout the weekend and stuff like that. We met more people throughout. Uh, I feel bad because I don't remember some people's names. Um, but after a while, like, it was the four of us. It was four of us grouped up. Uh, like I said, I feel really bad. I don't remember the other guy's name because he was really cool too and I hung out with him a lot. Um, we finally met up with the rest of the group. We were walking and we noticed, well, I noticed some people, like a big group chilling by some trees. So I was like, all right, fuck it. 
and shouted out kind of they said funny and i was like all right that's where we're going and there was a lot of people there like joey noel was there sean pitts was there uh nikki pettit was there and like all these people who i recognize through twitter and stuff like that part of their community is organizing the events and stuff like that and uh not that i like talk to everybody but like met more people i met pixel brave and stuff like that and there's some footage of me talking with people because pixel brave the homie and stuff like that and that was a pretty cool first meet up and stuff like that and then later that night we went to the foundry now the foundry's badass uh barcade really really cool um big open area they have big giant projector screens of games that you can play and they also have individual like those gaming setups that you can play at and PCs and stuff like that. So we went there and hung out and man, that was crazy. Like, um, music's playing, everything's going on, but that was awesome. But then Greg showed up totally unexpected and, you know, people were huddling around him and meeting him and stuff like that. And I was like, okay, I'll try and, you know, talk to him and stuff like that. And I was, you know, trying to be patient, wasn't pushy or anything like that. And another guy, guy I met, really nice guy, uh, Cameron, um, does the Naughty Games pa- podcast. He's like, yo, have you met Greg yet? I'm like, no, you know, I'll get to it. And he's like, no, not dealing with that. He's like, yo, this guy hasn't met Greg yet. Boom. And he's like fucking moving people out of the way so I can get up there. And he's like, yo, Greg, this is Brett. He's really cool. You know, he wants to meet you. And I'm like, hey, <laughs> all nervous and shit. Put up my hand. And he's like, no. And he hugs me right there. And like, that was really cool that just like, He's so down to earth, talked to me for a minute. And of course, you know, me being the social butterfly I am, like, oh man, that, like, talked to him for a minute. I'm like, ha 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 ha. You know, nerves took over. And then he went to somebody else. But like, even that just little moment was really cool that, you know, he would take the time to say hey and thank you for coming and stuff like that. And uh, Cameron was really cool for, you know, helping do that. Uh, I met Grimecraft that night as well. Uh, I took a photo of Sean Pitts. Not that I even talked to Sean Pitts. He's probably like, who the fuck are you? I was like, hey, I know you. Can I take a photo? Yeah, cool. Um, And then the next day, we went to the IGN tour. Uh, That was a lot. That was really cool. A lot of fun. Um, Definitely a good experience going through their offices, kind of seeing all the production rooms and the awards they got and all the random memorabilia and whatnot. Like, they got the, the... their lounge area has got like fighting game setups like yes all right cool um they did a little q a afterwards and like i wasn't super into ign but like i definitely always checked in there uh for gaming stuff and that's where i found greg and colin and stuff like that and like it's funny thinking of like how much content i watched of greg's I remember a little bit of Colin. I didn't watch Beyond or anything, but I remember like certain articles, and I'm like, oh, yeah, okay, that guy. Tim, I have probably had seen somewhere, but he was the one I connected with the least or remembered the least, and then Nick I remembered from Up at Noon as well. Um, but I was like, oh, yeah, okay. Like that's how I got my foot in the door here. Originally it was kind of funny because I remember first watching them. I was like, oh, what's this? Oh, okay, they do this thing, and then... Oh, and like they hooked me and brought me on. Sorry, a little sidetrack there. But the IGN tour was really, really cool. Um, not that I knew a lot of the people there, but that was fun. Then we went to what movie did we see? Shit. Um, there was some movie we went to. Wonder Woman was kind of funny life three. What was kind of funny life two? Huh. That good of a movie. Oh, X Men Apocalypse. I remember. Movie was eh. But that was a pretty cool experience. The theater was pretty nice. We didn't go to Alamo. We went somewhere else. But Alfredo and Jackie Butler were outside, so that was cool to kind of didn't meet them but see them. And then the day of the event, or at least I think so. I think we went food trucks. Oh, I randomly walked around SF on my own, um, which that was a thing I learned quickly. Like, SF's not bad, manageable, like, traveling and figuring out where you're going. So I think the first couple, first day, I took a lot of Ubers, like, okay, go here, go here, go here, go here. And SF has a homelessness problem, a homeless problem. So I was like, "Mm -hmm mm-hmm-hmm. But, like, after that day, I just started walking everywhere. And it was nice, like, you know, walking out, being outside, things like that. So I went a little exploring. I went to, like, some 
Chinatown type thing had a mall I randomly walked into and went to the food trucks earlier with the for the community event which was nice um talked to some more people there but then it was the day of the event so went to line up early I think I uh, I was at the Regency Ballroom they had the block people were all there and then I was the first guy in this corner selling it no I'm just kidding <laughs> I was on the corner standing there um Stood there for a good chunk of the day, and then we went in, and just going inside, like, it was very uh, breathtaking. It was like, oh, crap, it's going on. Um, so I walked in, and first person I ran into as I walked in was Barb Dunkelman from Rooster Teeth, and she's, like, kind of directing traffic. And I was like, oh, oh, hey, you know, just like, oh, okay, merch is this way. I'm like, okay, thank you very much. Like, it was quick, really quick reaction, but like really cool, like, I don't know, just really nice, quick impression, you know, kind of thing. So went in there, got some dope merch, got where I was situated. And it was funny because thinking about it now, kind of funny life two, kind of funny life three, pretty much in the same spot. Kind of funny life three, I got a little closer than the last time. Thanks to that VIP ticket. But um, yeah, so I kind of nestled in, or nestled in, I don't know, Grimecraft was playing, got some photos of him, they had the big upper area where all, like, the IGN guys and other Rooster Teeth guys and whatnot were in, and then, whew, it starts, it was, like, just watching the videos, the intro videos, it's so... Like, they did their job. They got you excited. They got you hyped and stuff like that. And the show was crazy. Um, Bernie Burns came out, introed the show. That was really fun. And then the guys make their entrances. And it's just awesome, like, seeing these photos. They're not great photos. They're very fuzzy. Very fuzzy. Um, but, like, rewatching the footage, which post-show will do that too. Um, rewatching the footage, like, it's interesting how media like photos and videos can put you back into a moment and it's incredible but watching these guys like doing their entrances and stuff like that it just like fucking it's a jolt of electricity right to you just like energizes you and you're in and you're invested and it was a good time so they came out you know did their stupid entrances but they were awesome and they came out and did their podcast and talked for a little while and stuff like that. Did funny little, oh God, funny little skits like their um, aerobic championship thing. That was great. So yeah, they came out and did their podcast and they had like a lot of guests on like rapid fire. People from Roost Teeth, people from past podcasts, stuff like that. Just quick in and out. Hey, how's it going? Check it out, you know, kind of thing. And then just more random stupid shenanigans that makes it entertaining and you're probably asking like brett why would you go to an event where you pay this much money because of a youtube channel and it's because these guys are real these guys are going out and doing stupid stuff because they think it's funny and they want to entertain people and like whether it's the aerobic thing where they dress up in fucking leotards and dance around or Tim and Nick rapping and shit like that it was really cool and it's just like it's the stupid stuff that you think like only you and your friends would get but then people like that do it and you're like yes fuck yes go do your thing so the show was great and you get a lot of photos of it but the show was a blast and then the next day was day two it was a two day show where it was a meet and greet and then more podcasts by um, the Achievement Hunter guys and who else came out? Um, Bruce Chief guys, they both did it. Um, you know, have, they did that. Um, and then there was also video games you could play and stuff like that. So that was really cool. The meet and greet was really, really quick. Um, but it was, it was pretty cool. So it was the four kind of funny guys, Greg, Colin, Tim, Nick. And then Gus Sorolla was there, and then Barb Hunkelman was there. You're in line, you're waiting, you know, whatever, whole shtick, give me your phone, take a quick, go out, you know, if you want anything signed, have it ready. 
Um, so Kevin was there kind of managing that, and he was really nice. Um, so I'm waiting, and uh, it was funny because, like, it's a kind of funny event, obviously. Well, Gus and Barb are on the end, and, like, nobody's paying attention to them. So I'm like, oh, hey, how's it going? You know, kind of quick talk with them. And then I walk behind, and I'm like, super nervous. I don't know why, because I'm an idiot. But Greg recognizes me from the founder. He's like, oh, hey, man, how was the show? You know, I'm like, that was great, and everything like that. And, like, yeah, it's awesome, man. I'm like, uh, where do you want me to stay? And he's like, oh, get right up on Tim. And Tim's like, oh, yeah, shit. Sure. I, like, hop on him, like, right behind him, smile, nice photo. And then Tim, like, was like, thank you for coming and stuff like that. Like, they were all really cool and nice. It was quick in and out, but, you know, it was, uh, it was, it was fun. Um, the podcasts were good. Um, they all came out and did their thing, you know, talking, talking, talking. Uh, and then there was a smash kind of tournament. Um, so they had people come up on stage and play with them, Nick and Tim and stuff like that. And that was pretty cool. Got right up front next to the stage for that. Got some nice show, uh, photos of that, but it was relaxing. And then got some photos of like some other cool people that I had met along the way. I got a photo with Grimecraft, got a photo with a guy, uh, Tom Hawkins. He was really cool and he was looking out for me, uh, throughout the whole weekend, just making sure I was, you know, felt involved. Uh, Matt Scarpino, Nick's brother, got a photo with him and stuff like that. And uh, it was a really good experience overall. I mean, like I said before, I definitely kind of in a way wished I was more social. But, like, it was good to step outside of my shell, go to this thing, and just see what it's all about. So that's kind of Funny Life too. I know I didn't really – it was a quick brush through, and I didn't really dive in a whole lot super well into it. And hopefully I do better with three, but we'll see. So three, I was back home in New York, and I was adamant about, I'm going, you know, like, this is a thing I need to go to every year if I can go every year. Um, so I flew out bright and early, uh, and I, first day they had, like, a meet and greet at some fucking thing, I don't know, um, but met up with them was messaging Joey being like hey I don't know if I'll make it here where are you guys going next and met up with her at the place she's like oh shit she remember me from last year didn't was like I didn't think you're gonna make it stuff like that so that was cool that people like recognized me remembered me because like let's let's be honest there's a lot of people at this event I'm not as not the most social person how are you going to remember me? You know, there's a lot of faces and names and things like that. But people fucking did. And that's what made it so cool that people were like, hey. Like, even if they didn't know your name right off the bat, they were like, I remember you. How are you doing? Oh, yeah, that, yeah, what's up? Like, fucking, it was so cool. And I'm looking forward to that again. Like, you know, catching up with people and stuff that I met with at two, met up with this one and stuff like that. Um, but, like, reconnecting with this uh, these people and stuff like that, meet new people and things like that. Um, so yeah, the first event lunch thing, I don't know. We ended up hanging out by these seals for, I don't know how long. I didn't really chat. I was kind of a shadow at that point. Um, that was cool. Got some wing wings for lunch, which people recommended. It was okay. I think I got to eat there in person. Um, but I ordered in, then we went to the foundry again. Awesome. Uh, they like kind of kept an area for just kind of funny at that time. Um, but that was really cool going back there. They had justice there that just came out and that is where I fucking shined. Um, like I just wanted to play the game cause it just came out and I was like, all right, I'm going to sit down here or ask people who are playing. And like the whole night I was just playing, playing, playing. And that's where I, you know, met people. Because this was like, okay, I know Injustice. I can talk about Injustice. So, like, it was way to break down the barrier and talk to these people without kind of grasping for straws of, like, mm, what do you talk about next? Like, it was more of a natural conversation. And that is when I met one Snowbike Mike. I don't know if it was the first night or the second night because there's two nights at Foundries. But through Injustice, I met Snowbike Mike without even knowing I met Snowbike Mike. Now, Snowbike Mike, awesome dude. Um, yeah, he sat down. I was playing by myself. He sat down, played a couple rounds with me. 
like having a good time. He's talking about, you know, what do you do? How's live streaming? What do you do with it? Things like that. Gave him my card and stuff like that. And it was awesome because I was kind of like put off at a sec for a second because I'm like, you're really social. I'm not. And I kind of felt awkward through it. But, you know, um, I don't know. So anyways, and then when he left, like he introduced himself. He's like, yeah, I'm Snow Like Mike. I was like, fuck, what? You're Snow? Because you hear about him in their podcast occasionally. Like his name comes up. And I'm like, oh, what? Hi. So it was like that just realization of like, oh, this is this person. That was really cool. So like using the games to kind of, um, you know, use it as a gateway to meet other people and stuff like that and talk with them and conversate with them. I think that helped. Um, so the Foundry was great for me. And Greg showed up again, showed up with Jen, and uh, Grimecraft was there the second night. But I guess, um, so anyways, the first night was a lot of fun. People were swarming Greg, so I didn't get to talk to him um, that time. But And then I guess Andy showed up right after I left. I was like, fuck. Um, but that was a fun night. Night one was good. And then day two, I decided I'm going to go explore, I believe, oh, it was the IGN tour. People were going on the IGN tour again. And I was like, all right, I did that last year. I'm good. Don't have to go on to it again. Um, I'm sure it was the same thing, you know, just a little refresh or whatever, rehash. So I was like, all right, I'll go explore on my own. So I decided to go to the studio, just visit the kind of funny studio, see what it was like, and, you know, take some photos of the outside. Ha, I'm here. So I decided to go to the comic shop also underneath it. So got out of the Uber. Took the photo from across the street. Ha ha, there's a studio. And I'm walking across the street, and I noticed to my left, there's some guys. They're packing some stuff into a truck. I was like, oh, okay. I look again, and I'm like, huh, those people look familiar. It was Kevin, and it was Cool Greg. And I was like, all right, that's awesome. They're busy. They got the event coming up. I'm not going to bother them. I'm about to walk into the store for the comic shop. I'm wearing my blue kind of funny hoodie. And all of a sudden I was here, yo, that fucking hoodie is gross. And I was like, okay. They acknowledge me. Now I go. So I scurry over like a little fucking dog. And like they were really, really cool. Met Kevin, met Cool Greg. You know, hey, what's your name? Oh, where are you from? The, you know, talking to him about the event, how they are, how they're feeling, what they need prepped and stuff like that. But it was like a quick, I don't know, five, ten minute conversation with those guys. And it was just really cool, like, that they were just open to talking to people. Like, hey, man, you know, what do you, this is great that you're here and let's fucking talk about it. So, like, yeah, quick conversation with them and then ran, you know, went back to the comic shop and wasn't. You know, the comic shop was really cool. It wasn't the biggest thing in the world, but it was a nice shop. And Cool Greg actually recommended some stuff. He's like, yo, get those WWE comics. They're pretty good. I'm like, all right. So I checked them out, and they were. He, he didn't lie to me. So I was really, really glad that, uh, you know, I went there. Cool opportunity to meet them real quick. But uh, then I did more exploring. I went walked around. I actually have a buddy who lives out in SF now. Uh, works for he does some programming stuff like that so I decided to get some lunch with him and you know meet up and catch up because I haven't seen him in a little while so I did some more exploring we went out got some lunch and then uh, went to a random mall that I just randomly stumbled upon I was like all right I'll walk around here for a little bit um, and that was interesting um, went to uh, fucking underdogs got the burrito from the second kind of funny left too that was a food recommendation went there mm fantastic plan on going there again this year um and then we had another foundry night planned grimecraft was playing live um so it was kind of like that's the thing and then later there was a movie that i'll talk about that they were going to so well, i figured i'd stop in a foundry go to the movie have a good time there um so the nice thing about where my hotel was, this was at the Regency Ballroom, once again, kind of funny, Life 3. My hotel for both of them, I got maybe two, three blocks away from the thing. So, you know, it was very easily accessible, walking past. So, as I talked about last time, walking everywhere. So, I, oh shit, that's a thing about kind of funny, Life 2 I forgot to talk about. But, uh, 
meeting Nick Scarpino after the first or the second day. Uh, okay, quick sidebar. Sorry. So the second day there was a going second kind of funny life too. There was a going away party at a hotel. People were just kind of meeting up and hanging out in the lobby and lounge or whatever you want to talk about. So I decided to go. Fuck it. So walking there, I walked past the Regency second day, and I looked over. You know, they're putting stuff away, and Nick is standing right outside, right out front, on his phone, texting away. And he's like, hey, man, I'm Brett. show was great. Thank you for that. Quick, in and out, boom, going. You know, so that was really cool. I know it's not the greatest story or segue ever, but that was a cool little, like, moment um, that I enjoyed. Okay, back, rebar. Um, so, Kind of Funny Life 3, Foundry. Um, walking distance, not too bad, maybe a 20 minute, 30 minute walk. Um, walk past, past the Regency, and then you walk past these, like, they look like government esque buildings, like a city hall, town hall, whatever you want to call it. Um, and there's this random concert going on, like, to the left of me. Now, I saw them setting it up the day prior, but it's something like, I don't know, but all I hear is. NWA. It's fucking Ice Cube singing straight out of Compton, just randomly on this fucking, you know, in this area. I'm like, oh, okay, cool. So, walk back that, past that. That was a little cool, like, random thing that was going on. Um, then we went to the Foundry. Grimecraft was playing. Really cool. More Injustice. Duh. Um, and stuff like that. So then, I mentioned a movie. There is a movie that was coming out that was like a wrestling documentary, but it was like a mockumentary, as I found out as I was watching it, um, that Greg helped produce and, like, you know, get going. And it's called uh, Heel Kick. So it was like, I'm a wrestling fan. I like Greg. Let's go support this. You know, go watch it. Um, so it was at a small little theater. Um, went there. Cool Greg was there. Greg was there. Met them outside. They greeted everybody. And uh, Super Killer Bunny was also there randomly, even though he said he wasn't going to be. Um, I watched that, and it, it was a funny movie. It wasn't what I was expecting at first, but like it, it was a good, it was a good film overall. Like I said, it was kind of like, um, you know, a re. Like I said, it was a mockumentary where it was the wrestling background and subject matter, um, but like they kind of like joked around about it. It was like two guys want to be wrestlers and they try it and they're like oh like realize that it's tough and stuff like that and they do that and um you know ultimately they have an indie match and whatever and have a good time but uh i don't know it's a very shitty synopsis of it um so day three another day of the or this is the day of the event food trucks once again was good and then i decided to go back to line um there's this one guy, I don't remember his name, might be Greg Atlas or somebody else, but he's always the first in line. Um, but yeah, VIP line, it was a separate line, so I decided to go there early. It was a decent spot in line. Um, but yeah, you're just chilling there all day, just outside, hanging out. Um, and it was hot as hell. So we're doing that, not really talking too much of people in line. Super Killer Bunny. Got a photo with him on that day. He was standing in the same corner I was standing the year prior. Uh, went in there. Got some dope-ass merch. Saw Jeff Ramsey real quick. Super, after he got in, just I think he said fuck the merch and went straight up to the front. He was maybe one or two people back. And then I got the same spot I got the previous year, just maybe a little bit farther ahead. Grimecraft was playing. That was cool. Um... And then, once again, that hype video. Now, this video, going back and re-watching it, is talking, is like speaking to me more and hitting me harder than it did then. Like, it hit me at one, on one level at the event, like, yeah, fucking hype and excitement. But now, watching it again, the messaging of it, because they were going, kind of funny, was going through a rough year that year. They lost Colin due to, you know, some differences. But watching it now, it like hits me at a different level, and it's interesting. It's like, are you doing what you're happy with? Um, you know, don't be scared to fail. Try again. Do things. Regrow. Rebuild. Grow into a new direction, and then 
you know, achieve what you want to achieve. And that was really cool. And then they just fucking went full throttle into it. And the amount of production they put into that year, Andy playing guitar, um, you know, Stars that Bangled Banner, Xavier Woods hosting it was amazing. And your boy made an ass of himself doing a wrestling chant at a certain point. He was not supposed to be doing a wrestling chant, but got acknowledged for doing the wrestling chant. Um, Xavier killed it at hosting, and then it's back onto these stupid, awesome entrances. Kevin came out, was falling down all over the place. Nick was doing a fucking, uh, like, uh, what is it called? Top Gun esque entrance. Uh, Craig did another wrestling entrance. He did Undertaker the year before. He did a Chris Jericho one this time, and then Tim fucking coming out of the ceiling on some wires. Like, it was insanity, and it's just more of what they were doing. And then Greg came out, did a real talk with us, like, what everything is about and how they wanted to grow and change and things like that. They introduced some new cast that were part-timers and also full-timers, uh, revealed all them, and then the show just went even more into chaos. I know I said it already went into chaos, but doing renditions of old shows they did, live pers- performances of Nick's doing stand-up, another friend of their doing stand-up, some musical acts, Mega Ran coming out, uh, tone deaf coming out and the tone deaf one was really cool um they like did a little you know crowd interaction thing but at one point it was kind of ridiculous because they had the crowd moving around i was like ah no but like i got some really cool photos of them right in front of me because they came out and uh you know were doing their thing and that was cool um and then uh, they did this whole little shtick. I know we have our Extra Life belt. Our Extra Life belt is modeled after the kind of funny World Championship. They were doing the Nintendo World Championship at first, which was just a little dinky piece of plastic that they were like doing Nintendo games over. If they won, then the person would get the belt. So they built up this wrestling thing. I know a lot of people who are watching this aren't wrestling fans, but a little wrestling feud and facade of like... Uh, Greg's the bad guy, Nick's the good guy, and, you know, they're going to do Mario Kart and whatever, and Greg won, and then Nick was all upset, but turns out Nick went behind his back, and that belt doesn't even count anymore, there's a new belt, so it's an actual belt now, and now it's for any game and anything, and then they just went through this whole assortment of, like, the title lose, like, changing hands and games being played, like, Xavier Woods had it at one time, and then they had grudge matches between people for no reason, and then there was a big, like, eight-man match to get the belt back it was just like if you're a wrestling fan you could appreciate it for one level if you're just a kind of funny fan you can appreciate it for another level my explanation of it does no justice i know that but like thinking about it it was really really cool and then it was kind of their finale and they did more of a live performance thing but the guys came out uh andy nick and tim and sang backstreet boys randomly um, as their little, uh, what do you call it, um, gimmick band, and then, you know, the goodbyes and stuff like that, and it was another great event and stuff like that, and then on the day two, it was a VIP only day, um, similar to how it be this year, it's a meet and greet, they had it at the foundry again, hey, and then this one was definitely a much better meet and greet um because you had time to actually talk to them a little bit um i don't think they expected the time the amount of time that it was going to take because they were trying to you know be out on the floor and up and about walking around more but like you go you go up one at a time essentially in this line you know talk to each of them down the row move down after like four or five people then they'll take an individual shot with each of you so like i got this really awesome shot of me and the guys all together and stuff like that and then it's just people hanging out and playing games there's people playing nintendo switch people still playing injustice and other games i got cameron here um and then towards the end because they were finally able to escape the table they were just out and about like greg was playing mario kart with people and walking around and talking with people and I had a little pet peeve, but I won't go into it too much, of, like, if there's a line waiting to talk to somebody, you think you'd be in and out, you know, not just 
taking up all the time in the world but i like i said i'll digress i'm not going to talk about it too much so like they're around and i hadn't really met andy so i wanted to so i was hanging out i was waiting patiently but i noticed there was a line so when it finally came up to my turn i just wanted to be quick one quick question all right cool picture hey man thank you appreciate it so i asked him about his model the three modeling and animating and stuff like that what program do you use what would you recommend all right cool so he was really cool and down to earth and especially knowing like he was a community member too and like he was able to work up to this position is very it's a cool cool thing to see and I don't know, see the change or whatever. I don't know what the fuck you want to call it. Um, but then it just like rapid fire got photos with some people like Kevin, Tim, Cool Greg, Joey Noel, stuff like that as we're before we were leaving. And then it wrapped up with we went to see Wonder Woman, which went to the Alamo, <gasps> which is amazing movie theater. They're very strict on shut the fuck up or we'll kick you out. Amazing food. They got servers that bring it all to you and stuff like that. And... It was it was a really good movie too. That definitely helped. But like that was an awesome experience. And like kind of funny life three and kind of funny life two both are awesome in their own way. Um, kind of funny life two, you know, being brave, doing this thing on my own in a state that I don't know, and going by myself. And then kind of funny three life three being the rehash, but also trying to be better and more social. And in a way, I was. In a way, I wasn't. But like they're both unique in their own way but they're both awesome in their own way and i'm so happy that i went out and went to them and had those experiences and like i said like with these photos going back like reliving it and then also having the photos or sorry the videos that they have of each of these live events it's like you it punches you in the chest again like i can't speak highly enough of these videos and video packages that they make and it's just like any game trailers like any movie trailer like any fucking music in general just like that is the shit that i want to create like something comes on and you literally get goosebumps and chills from watching it and you can watch it a million times but when you ever when you see it and you feel it man is it awesome and like if I can even if I can even, mm-hmm, if I can even do that a little bit like make one person get that reaction like that is a fucking goal and shit like that like that is what I want to do is I want to create excitement in people like that to get a reaction for a stupid video or event that's coming up and stuff like that and that's what I try and aim to do with the stream like it's extra life it's the 12 hour stream it's the 24 for 24 like I wanna and the new direction that we're going now like if we're having an event I wanna hype the shit out of that event and make it awesome make it cool and I know like we're not reaching the audience they are but like if it's the 10 people the 10 homies or whatever it is that are here and are like man this is badass then fuck yeah we did what we wanted to do and kind of funny definitely is an inspiration to like go after and chase after and even their community like seeing what the community creates it's awesome um so yeah that's kind of funny life two and three now I'm going to talk about prom, which is the most recent event coming up. And this is a different one because it's not the same as two and three. Two and three were a very show atmosphere. Stand here, watch us, two, three hours, do stupid shit. Prom, we're going in with a dark a clean slate, a dark room. We have no clear idea what is going to happen because this is the first time it is. We know it's 80s, 90s theme. We know music's going to be played. We know it's very personable, personal and personable. But like what show, if any show, is there going to be? Are they going to have a stage? Are they going to 
talk about new stuff are they going to show anything new are they going to do grand entrances are they just going to hang out and just chill are there going to be tables for us to sit at are there going to be merch to sell is there going to be anything going on and it's like interesting to think about because i assume there's got to be merch but then where do you put it because if it's a dance you don't want to be fucking carrying that everywhere and lugging that around especially for three hours are they going to do announcements you would think so that's kind of like their end of the year new year hey check out the new stuff we're doing kind of duh, stuff i don't know is it just the hangout of prom and if so is there going to just be giant masses of people around them all the time because that's going to suck for the other people that don't get in that massive circle but you know you know what i mean like it's interesting but i think the reason i'm excited for it is because of the connections i have now obviously on the stream we've been doing crossover streams and i've been getting slowly more in tune and engaged in the other kind of funny best friends that stream obviously the number one and two no particular order super killer bunny and lady killer bunny i'm excited to meet lady killer bunny in person for the first time i'm excited to actually talk and hang out with super killer bunny in person rather than just the slightly awkward me of kind of funny life three where he was very welcoming and allowed me to you know hang out with his group at points and stuff like that but like i was very shadow mode and stuff like that um so like that's I'm, I'm excited to not be the shadow that i was in two and three i'm excited to feel more myself and be out there as you know brett as enigma 911 and not necessarily sell myself but be out there and not feel out of it so super and lady up there as we see in the chat right now, of course, Snowbike Mike. That quick interaction at Kind of Funny Live 3 has sparked something else that I want to hang out with Snowbike Mike more. Meet him more, talk to him more, stuff like that. See Snowbike Mike again. Um, then there's other people. Like, I mean, I know not all these other people are going, but like getting to know more of these people and interacting with them. I'm going to just list off a bunch of names whether they're going or not. Tay Chenares, Mr. Penguin and Penguin, Red Bearded Fox, Shona 111, um, Cameron, Tom Hawkins, uh, Joey Noel. You know, like, there's a lot of these people where I'm like, okay, I want to make more of a connection than I already have kind of deal and stuff like that. And uh, I'm excited for that. I'm excited to go out there, be myself, and see if i can meet more people like if i feel more comfortable maybe more people will feel comfortable with me and i can meet more people and stuff like that and there's nothing wrong with that you know why not is my thing so that's my deal i think vip day you know kind of thing would be cool or the second day will be awesome too kind of reconnect with the guys maybe talk to some of those guys i haven't talked to a lot like i'd love to talk to andy more pick his brain a little bit more uh, Kevin's really cool and accessible cool Greg yeah um, and stuff like that and I mean you know obviously talk to anybody any of them as much as I can and you know just thank them for what they do but also learn more if I can um, and stuff like that so I'm excited for it we got as of recording this podcast right now I have 12 days until I'll be in San Francisco um so the day before the 27th i'll do stream like normal i will do stream i will take a shower and then my plane departs at 5 45. so i will probably leave here about 4 4 30. go to the airport chill out take off ko got one layover 
think it's Jersey. Fly over there. KO again. In the, on the plane. Wake up refreshed. And kill it. First day. Find the bunnies. Go hang out. Do our thing on Thursday. Friday go to the Redwoods. Do an awesome tour there. Go to the Foundry. Fight it out with Snowbike Mike and Super. Pa -pa. Saturday, the event itself. Go to the food trucks. Hang out there. Sunday, VIP day. Incredibles 2. Monday, take off. It's going to be an interesting experience. I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to what comes after in a way too. Um, and hopefully it's a good experience overall, which I'm sure it will be. So yeah. Well guys, that's been another episode of Wait, What Are We Talking About? Podcast episode 23. Thank you guys for hanging out. Remember, you can watch this podcast live over on twitch.tv slash enigma9011 every first and third Saturday of the month, 8 p.m. Eastern time. Or you can catch it over on youtube.com, search enigma9011, broken out topic by topic, or as one big video if that tickles your fancy. Um, if you have any topics for the show, of course, comment down below. We'll see if we can get to them. Um, obviously, it's not always me solo all the time. We do have some guests on occasionally. Um, so if you have any... You know, topics for any of us, not just me in general. Of course, feel free to put it down there, down below. We'll comment or we'll talk about it, or you can post it in Discord. Um, if you are a viewer and you're not subbed, followed, uh, subbed again. I don't know. Hit that follow button. Hit that sub button. Sub to your boy on Twitch. Get a cool emote. We got two of them. We got lewd. We got thick. Oh, sorry. Thick. And then we got a third one that we don't know yet. But you could do that. Support your boy. Help me out. Make more content. That'd be appreciated. But hit that follow button. You can know when we go live with the games and whatnot and things like that. Um, other than that, I think that wraps it up. This will be my last podcast before Kind of Funny Prom. So once I come back next episode, which should be July 7th. Yeah, July 7th, I'll have a topic for how Kind of Funny Prom was. Go through photos and things like that. But also might have some guests on. Who knows? I don't know. Talk to the parentals. They're down. Talk to Pancake. She might be down eventually. I don't know, unless she cancels again. And other people. So thank you guys for watching. Appreciate it. Have a good day. Have a good day. Have a good one. I don't know. 